name of Jesus, the holiest of names, the name above every other name, the name at which demons tremble, the dead are raised, the sick are healed. This name in which I have seen with my own eyes countless miracles performed. They continue to happen today because this word that prom God promised through Christ Jesus to his disciples is absolutely true. If we pray in his name, he shows up. And wherever Jesus shows up, things happen. Every time we pray in his name, something happens. Every single time, right? Sometimes the things happen that we pray for immediately. Other times we simply experience his love. But friends, if you have the love of God, you have everything, don't you? You have the treasure. I, I, wanna, I wanna give to you uh, the reading from today's, well, yesterday's Office of Readings in the Old Breviary from St. Bernard of Clairvaux. He writes on the Song of Songs about the name of Jesus. And this, <laughs> it just, it's just, it's amazing. I, I, go to the saints, they're remarkable. Like just, uh, if you think I preach well, like listen to this guy and you realize the difference between me and real preachers. Listen to this. Not in vain does the Holy Spirit compare the name of the bridegroom with oil. When he makes the bride say to the bridegroom, your name is as oil poured out. For oil gives light, nourishment, and ointment. It feeds the flame, nourishes the flesh, eases pain. It is light and food and medicine. See, all this applies to the bridegroom's name. When preached on, it enlightens. When thought on, it enlivens. And when called on, it smooths and soothes. Let us follow through each point. What do you think caused a sudden shining of faith's light throughout the world, if not the preaching of the name of Jesus? Has not God called us into his own wonderful light by the radiance of this name? Thus we are illumined, and in this light we see light. So that St. Paul says to us with good reason, you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. This same apostle Paul was charged to carry this name among kings and nations and the children of Israel, and he did carry this name, carried it like a torch, and enlightened his homeland. Everywhere he proclaimed, the night is far advanced, the day is at hand. Let us therefore lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Right, do you see that the name of Jesus is your armor too, that armor of light? <laughs> Let us walk becomingly as in the day. Paul set this lamp upon its stand for all to see, preaching everywhere, Jesus and him crucified. Isn't it amazing? We look at all the meetings we've been having in the church, like globally, and they barely mention the name of Jesus. It's sickening. We wonder why everyone's so frustrated with what's happening in church, because we are forgetting that it, we, our purpose, our one purpose is to proclaim the name of Jesus to the world because we will not save the world through another program, through more laws, through more government, through more organizational bureaucracy, we will save the world through the proclamation of the name of Jesus. It's the only name we can be saved by. Have you ever seen somebody saved by another name? Have you ever seen someone raised from the dead by another name? Have we called on another name? Except for Mary, maybe. <laughs> right? But only because she's related to him, only because their hearts are one, and he has given her that grace that the holy names of Jesus and Mary obtain great miracles. But friends, it's only because of who he is. If we lose who he is, Mary's nothing. If we lose who he is, we're nothing. We're baptized in his name. You have a new name and it is light. You were darkness and now you have light. Listen to this, how this light sparkled and drew the gaze of all beholding it when it came forth from St. Peter's mouth like lightning. Do you see what he did to that lame, crippled man? Not because of him. He says so later, he's like, do you think we made this man walk by our own power? You're nuts. 
We will let you know how we did this. It is in the name of Jesus whom you crucified and who has risen from the dead that this man now walks. His name is in us. And just as he said, Philip, don't you know me? I'm in the Father and the Father's in me and I want to be in you. And you will do these things. And they did them. And that's why people were converted. Do you know why we're doing what we're doing here in this parish? Is so that your name would be in his, right? He would be in you. Your name, Jesus' name would be in you and you would proclaim it to the world. That you'd have the courage that you need to go out there and tell people about the name of Jesus and that he's here in this church and he wants to live in them too. And yeah, is it going to be difficult? You better believe it. You're going to have persecution from false believers and those in the church who don't believe in the name of Jesus but like being in the pews for whatever benefit they get. But friends... As the name of Jesus is more proclaimed, they get more uncomfortable. Because the name of Jesus requires that you give up all your sins, every single one of them. And I have to be convicted as well and say, I have to be willing to give up everything for him. Most days I'm there. (laughs) Not every day. So we need more conversion. Amen? We need more light and food and medicine for the wounds of our hearts because so many people don't believe he's good because they've never seen such things, but you've seen them, haven't you? You know he's good, don't you? Does his word live in you? Then why aren't you telling people about it? Tell them, show them more importantly because they, they can hear the word all day long, but until they see it proclaimed in you, Right, they're not going to change. It set a lame man soundly on his feet and gave sight to many who were spiritually blind, for certainly Peter struck sparks when he declared, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, arise and walk. The name of Jesus is not only light, it's also food. Because you might be saying, I, 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 yeah, I need help. Are you not strengthened whenever you meditate on it? If we look at all the other stuff right in the world, like it just depresses us so much. And we're just like, it just, it's like this weight that just boulders. It's like, oh, how can I get out from this? The, the things in the world, the things in the church, the things in my, my family, the things, it's just so much. And we say, Jesus! It's food. What is its equal for enriching the mind that thinks about it? What else can so renew your fatigued spiritual powers, bolster virtue, make good and upright habits grow, foster pure affections? All spiritual food is dry if this oil is not mixed in with it. Isn't that great? Prayer is dry if the name of Jesus is not mixed into it like oil in our food. (laughs) Tasteless if it's not seasoned with this salt. Anything you write is without savor for me unless I read the name of Jesus in it. How often have we read recent church documents that don't even mention his name? We know what kind of document they are. A worldly one. Even if they're written by a bishop or a cardinal. We know where the poison and the rot is in our church, friends, is because when bishops and priests and lay faithful talk about worldly things with no reference to Jesus, it's scandalous. And it's not our identity. It's not who we are. Jesus is our life. He's our identity. It needs to be in everything we write, everything we do. If we're going to call it Catholic, if we're going to call it Christian, it better have Jesus in the center of it, or it's worthless. Your disputations, he says it, Your disputations and your conferences remain flat to me unless they ring with the name of Jesus. This whole synod on synodality, I hear very little Jesus in it. They're flat and empty conferences until Jesus is the center and the reason why we're doing anything we're doing. Jesus is honey to the mouth, sweet song to the ear, joyful delight to the heart, but it is also a medicine. If someone sad is among you, Let Jesus come into his heart and from there leap to his lips and behold as the light of his name arises all clouds pass and cheerfulness returns. Has someone lapsed into sin? Worse, is despair pushing him headlong into a trap 
where death awaits his soul. Have you been in that place, friends? Despairing about the world of the church? It's a trap. Death awaits you. Surely, if he invokes the name of life, he'll be revitalized at once. St. Bernard. That's the dude. He knows Jesus. Listen to the saints and the doctors of the church when you're confused, friends. I can, that's the best thing I can tell you. Don't listen to those who haven't been proven yet through the crucible of suffering and shown themselves faithful to the end. Look to the saints and be enlightened. Look to Jesus and be enlightened. His name is light and food and medicine.